Welcome to Fun and Games Side Quests. Every episode is a different host sharing a video game they love and why they love it. Hi everyone. Welcome to another brand new episode of Side Quests. I am the series producer, Matt aka Stormageddon, and I am here today to talk about a game that I have absolutely fallen head over heels in love with, the game Chicory, A Colorful Tale. Up front, I do want to mention that I was provided a review key by Finji. Thank you, Finji, for the review key. And that my original intention was to just talk about the game on Fun and Games proper. But after falling madly in love with the game, I thought it was more appropriate to do an episode of side quests about it. While I'm grateful for the review key, I'm not doing this out of obligation. I'm doing this because I genuinely absolutely adore Chicory, A Colorful Tale. I played Chicory on the Switch, but it is available on PS4, PS5, Windows, as well as Mac. And I really just needed to talk about how this game dives deeper into the things that are at the core of my being than a lot of other games I've played. It's an indie game, again, published by Finji and designed and developed by Greg Lobanov. It's an indie game. And I've never played a game that dives so deeply into depression and imposter syndrome as this game has. The brief synopsis of the story is you play in the world of Picnic, where the great brush wielder protects the world and fills it with color. You wake up one day as the main character who can have any name you want. That I believe they suggest you name them the name of a food. My character's name was Sushi for all purposes of this plot uh, synopsis. And so Sushi wakes up and realizes that all the color is gone. Sushi is the janitor, the housekeeper, the homekeeper of the wielder's tower. You work there and you idolize Chicory, the most recent brush wielder. Through a series of events, you, Sushi at least the name of my little dog character, discover that Chicory has left the brush. And you, so you take it just for a little while, see what's up, and unfolds this incredible story about worthiness, imposter syndrome, depression, and needing help. The main mechanic of the game is you use the brush to paint the world. You can paint as little or as much as you want, and all of the combat and puzzle solving requires you to use this paintbrush. If you're familiar with the Okami games, they also have a similar kind of style of brush use, you know, painting stuff on screen and making things happen. I don't want to talk too much about the story of this game because I don't want to give it away. What I love about this game is that the main character that you're playing looks up to Chicory. Chicory, however, feels like a failure and struggles to even feel worthy of the brush that they have, this important artifact that means they are the protector of this land. The writing is so brilliant. I cried several times playing this game and felt so seen by a lot of the dialogue and experiences of the characters in this game. The main character has an incredible supportive family that loves them. They have this awesome world that they can travel around and discover. There are, I believe, four or five main dungeons. There are, I think it's seven or eight chapters in total. It's hard to remember because it's been a little bit since I played the game. But this game moves at a brisk pace, but not with lack of nuance. And it meant the world to me as someone who struggles with imposter syndrome pretty regularly, also suffers from depression, is in therapy, and just doesn't always feel like I can handle it or hack it in the world, this game really touched me close to my heart. I think that if you really like indie games and you want to experience something a little different and a little more human, ironically, with an entire cast of animal characters all named based on food, I really recommend this game. Again, I don't want to go too deep into the narrative because I think this narrative is wholly worth experiencing on your own. There are incredible characters, awesome worlds, and most importantly, I did mention, so the main mechanic of this game is that you're using a brush to color in and paint things. If you're not an artist, if you don't feel like you're a visual artist, something I much myself feel, this game is still for you because you don't have to color in every screen, you can. You can treat it like a coloring book and color in everything. Or you can just do what you need to get through the story, use the color to get to all the different places that you need to get to. Either way is valid. There is no wrong way 
to do art in this game, which I think is also such a powerful thing. There are different little like art school moments that you can have where you are asked to paint a particular item or thing. There are, you know, signs that you paint and create logos, I believe, for one of the pizzerias in the game. And they don't criticize you. You could draw a squiggly line and they praise it. They thank you for it. They recognize that art is art and that everything is perspective and perception. I love that freedom that this game gives. Did I color in every screen? No. Did I, by the end of the game, feel the need to color in quite a bit? Yeah. Also, the soundtrack is incredible in this game. Lena Rain does incredible work here. The motifs are beautiful. The serene moments are serene. The hectic moments are hectic. From the boss battle themes to the just every town that you visit, this game's music is absolutely gorgeous and absolutely amplifies the experience. I feel like I'm kind of rambling here. I, I came into this wanting to just get people to play this game. Again, I think if you're someone who struggled with imposter syndrome, have felt at any moment that you're not good enough or that you can't do the things that you want to do, this game is definitely for you. I have to make a special thank you also to previous host of SideQuests and previous guest of Fun and Games, Rebecca Valentine, who, along with Cam Hawkins, also a previous host of this series, when I mentioned I hadn't played this game, absolutely went apeshit on Twitter. They insisted that I play this game and fortuitously got the game code from Finji and was like, all right, I'm going to play this game. People have talked about this game so much and I want to see if there is as much magic as they say there is. And there is and more. It is one of the most emotional rides I've had playing a video game in a long time. And yes, I'm putting it up there with games like The Last of Us 2 and other games that have made me think and cry and feel uncomfortable. This game makes you sit with depression and imposter syndrome in a way that no other video game or piece of media that I've engaged with ever has. And so I think that while it can be uncomfortable to face those things. I think ultimately the game's message and love for people on a very deep and emotional level is unbeatable and absolutely worth experiencing. So if you have not played Chicory, A Colorful Tale, I highly, highly recommend it. It's available in a multitude of different places and I think it's worth every penny and every moment of time that you can give it. Again, I'm Matt, a.k.a. Stormageddon. I'm the producer of this series. I host a myriad of podcasts on Certain POV. You can go to certainpov.com to find all of those podcasts. You can also go to djstormageddon.com to find everything that I work on, and as well, my merch page, my Kofi, everything. If you want to support any of the things that I do, that is the best place to go. You can also follow me on Twitter at DJ underscore Stormageddon. If you have at any moment thought about playing this game or just heard of it and vaguely thought about playing it, definitely go give it a try. I promise you that you will enjoy this incredible experience and it will absolutely be worth your time. That's enough from me. I've rambled on enough about Chicory and I think y'all get the idea. So with that said, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening and happy gaming. Hey there, Screen Beans. Have you heard about Screen Snark? Rachel, this is an ad break. They aren't Screen Beans until they listen to the show. Fine. Potential Screen Beans. You like movies and TV shows, right? I mean, who doesn't? Screen Snark is a casual conversation about the movies and television shows that are shaping us as we live our everyday lives. That's right, Matt. We have a chat with at least one incredible guest every episode, hailing from all walks. We've interviewed chefs, writers, costumers, musicians, yoga teachers, comedians, burlesque dancers, folks in the film and TV industry, and more. We'd be delighted for you to join us every other Monday on the Certain POV Podcast Network. Or wherever you get your podcasts, fresh and tasty off the presses. What? what? That's... No, that's not... Can I call them Screen Beans now? Fine. Screen Beans! So tune in and we'll see you at the movies or on a couch somewhere. Because you're a whole Screen Beans now. You will be mine. Aurora. CPOV. CertainPOV.com.